All right, guys, here we go. Ending off 2019 strong. Alon Cruz, how you doing, my man? I'm doing well. How are you doing, man? Doing good, bro. Uh, happy holidays to you and yours. Uh, best time of the year. Thank you. It is. It is. I think everybody's a little more uh, family oriented at right. this time, right? So, you know, most of the year, everybody's just kind of doing their own thing. And then it seems like the end of the year, we cap it off with, you know, the heartwarming, right. lovey-dovey feeling. So that's cool. <laughs> And uh, what a better year for you, dude. 2019, uh, the Contender Series show as a whole. Uh, I was at the first one this year at the Apex Center. Just loved it. Nice. Um, knew, you know, the place is epic. Uh, Dana White is all in on it. The matchmaking on it is just like top notch. And then, of course, you have one of those moments of the year there. Uh, so put a bow. 2019 is about to end. We got a couple of days left. Christmas, end of the year. Uh, put a bow in your 2019 um man i'm i'm 2019 was a roller coaster you know i just you know in the beginning of the year i had a fight in georgia and you know i fought the number one ranked guy in georgia and i beat him and then i signed with my agent dana rubenstein and he was like you know we're gonna try and get you on the contender series like well, i don't know if we're gonna be able to he's like maybe we should try and fight one more time it'll give you a better chance so then it was like all right now i have to fight somebody else uh you know another potential to you know, take a loss, I guess, um, because I was on a three-fight win streak, and he's like, you know, one more fight, so, but he ended up getting me another fight, or getting me the Contender Series fight, we got on, obviously, I won, you know, with a great <laughs> flying knee at the end, right. and I get a tough, a tough opponent, Steven Wynn, um, you know, hats off to him, and, you know, I wanted to fight again at the end of 2019, like December, Right. Uh, but in that fight, I actually partially tore a ligament in my thumb and strained two other ligaments. So it was like this big, super high of like getting signed, you right. know, talking to Dana and everything, getting the contract. And then it's like, I'm not going to be able to fight till early next year. <laughs> you know, right. so, but I can't complain. You know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, absolutely, man. And then it's got to feel great to have that uh, comfort, have that umbrella over you. Uh, UFC fighter on your name now, uh, training, uh, weight cut, all that stuff going forward. It's just it's such a, um, you know, tool in your tool shed to say, hey, UFC fighter, Alon Cruz. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, that's that's definitely one of my biggest goals. Uh, right. You know, when I started the sport was to make it to the UFC. You know, I always had a, a, a list of goals on how to get to where I was trying to get to. So one, it was win my first amateur fight, did that. Yeah. Win my first amateur title fight, did that. Become, you know, make my pro debut, become pro. Uh, win a pro title, which I didn't do. Those are only, my only two losses are in title fights. Uh, but, you know, and then obviously make it to the UFC and then I, I hit that goal. And then obviously another goal was, you know, to be on ESPN. I got to do that. And I got to make ESPN top 10 plays. You know, so I can't really complain. A lot more of those coming up for you in 2020. Before we get into that, uh, talking about making goals, when you first probably made your, hey, amateur goal win, right? The Contender Series wasn't around. Like, you know what I mean? The Contender Series was just a, an idea. It's it's insane now. Every fighter I talk to, every amateur or professional fighter that's 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, like, they're just so amped about the Contender Series. Like, that's like, uh, you know, when I was growing up, it was that Ultimate Fighter show. Like, that was everything to kind of come on up. And then, you know, the regional scene is so good. But now the Contender Series has so much merit. It's like, it's just, uh, I, I know it sounds crazy. I'm such, when there's a show that's not a pay-per-view and it's a Saturday and, you know, i married, I got kids, I got to pick and choose my battles. During the summer, I'm like, darling, I want my Tuesday night. Like, give me the yeah. Contender Series. You can have Saturday. I'll watch the main event, uh, you know, on YouTube or somewhere. The Contender Series is just on fire. You know what I mean? What do you think about the show? Dude, I love the Contender Series. I love watching regional shows because, you know, right. The, guy, the guys in the regional shows are like college football players, right? They're trying to make a name for themselves. They're going extremely hard, especially in front of Dana and uh, Sean Shelby and McMaynard. So, you know, like I like because I like to watch regional, show, regional shows like LFA, uh, you know, Ring of Combat, CFFC, King of the Cage. Like I love watching any kind of MMA content. I love to watch it if, if I'm, it's available for me, for me to watch it. So the Contender Series is just another – another uh, piece of content that I can watch, you know, every Tuesday night during right. the season. And they're all killers. They're all guys that, you know, right. I could potentially be fighting as well as they're guys that, you know, might become stars later on. So I like to see the fighters 
you know, when they're still making their their start. Right. And then you see them progress, and you're like, man, I remember I saw his. I remember watching Kamara Usman's fight. Uh, I think in LFA, like a long time ago. And wow. I was like, I was like, man, I was like, this kid. I just remember watching him. I was like, man, so this kid's got some nasty wrestling. Right. And uh, I was just like impressed with his grappling. And then now he's the champ. So it was cool to watch him go from LFA so, all yeah. the way to the belt. So dope. Yeah, I, it's I love the origin stories. Um, I literally just recorded the podcast. I'm going to drop in at January 1st. And it's my I'm picking four prospects who are, uh, you know, two and oh, four and oh, three and oh, that are not they're, they're the best regional fighters in their region. And I think I got them calling to a major show. If it's one FC or UFC or belt or whatever it is, I got that drop in January 1st. Nice. Uh, yeah, I love seeing the future. You know what I mean? It's like this mystic ball. The contender series is just, yeah, full of absolute studs. You're one of them. And that's okay. Let's go. Oh, before we go there, one more, you said regional scene, Florida, man. Uh, I was hitting it all year long. Is it me? Am I so biased or the Florida regional scene is just absolutely bananas right now. It's like insane. There are just shows popping up everywhere. The talent top end, high end talent. People are training year round. You got uh, ATT down there, coconut Creek. Yep. It's just, so many big killers. Jacksonville's on fire. The Panhandle, Pensacola's on fire. Island fights is up there. There's yep. just so much talent. Am I am I off base on this? No, you're 100 percent correct. I don't think people really realize how MMA centric uh, Florida is. Like, this is a fight state. People love to fight in Florida. Like, they love to watch fights. Like you said, they've got ATT, Coconut Creek. They've got Hard Knocks, Hard Knocks 365 right down the road. Uh, Fusion Excel in Orlando. You know, uh, we got Gracie Tampa South here in Tampa. I've got my team, team, team Def War. Right. I mean, the thing is, like, you know, we have these big, giant gyms. And like I said, there's so many new promotions popping up. I and mean, we've got Titan FC, uh, the RFC. Uh, now Bare Knuckles getting pretty big down here as well. Like, they right. have a lot of big shows coming on. It's, you know, it's getting huge as of now. Miami, they got a huge show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, they're doing huge. And I I mean, yeah. I would never do bare knuckle. I'm, I'm not trying to get hit in the face with <laughs> someone's knuckles. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's, you know, Florida is a, it's a fight state, you know, right. everybody loves to do it. And that's why you have very high talent people training down here. One, because year round, you have great weather. You mm -hmm. know, it's not like you're ever going to be snowed in somewhere or, you know, whatever the case may be. Down here, you can go to the beach every day and recover if you want to. Absolutely, man. It's uh, I'm here in Daytona Beach, Florida. It is 72 degrees on it is December 23rd, right before Christmas Eve. Life's good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm about to go there, jog around the block. I can't, uh, can't complain. <laughs> absolutely not. All right, let's get into it. I was so pumped when I saw this. Uh, you were definitely one of the ones I, I was waiting and waiting to see when you were going to debut. I literally just talked to Felicia Spencer, who is on the same show, Northbrook, All Virginia. Right. Uh, February 29th, the Northbrook Scope. I've been there a couple of times. It's a sweet venue. My man, uh, congratulations on uh, February 29th. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I just, uh, you know, I have been talking with my agent for a few days now. And we, we didn't know if it was confirmed or anything yet. But, you know, we kind of knew when we were, we were, we were really looking for the March 7th card originally. Okay. And, uh, but then he said, you know, it's looking like February 29th. So I was like, that's cool. And, uh, you know, I have my opponent. And I was like, all right. So then, like, you know, I'm always kind of like, I don't really take anything too seriously until I get the contract and I'm able to sign it. Right. So once I got the contract, I signed it like 30 seconds later, I sent it right back out and I was like, all right, like I did my part, you know, we're good to go. And, uh, you know, that's, that, that's kind of it. I'm just, I'm, I'm stoked and I'm ready to, you know, come to 2020 with a bang. Absolutely. Uh, man, it's at the end of 2019. How did you send that contract out? Is it an app? Do you take a picture? Do you send it back to him or do you literally mail it or fax it back to him? No, it well, I know some people like that. Well, I don't have a printer at my house, so I don't even have a computer, right? So, you know, I, I'm not gonna go to Kinko's and go print it out and then <laughs> sign it, which I did have to do when I, when I initially signed for the contender series. I had to go and print out like 23 pages and sign all this, which and then fax it back. But for this, it was just I got my contract or my about agreement and I, you know, hit the little edit thing and flipped it over and I, <laughs> hey, like right. this, and I sent it right back out. We're good to go. That's awesome, man. I could see you, uh, you know, at Kinko's, and there's an old lady. They're like, sir, get out of my way. You know, I'm trying to, you know, buy some groceries here at Staples or Kinko's. And you're like, ma'am, I'm trying to sign my UFC contract. Get off my back. Or there'll be, don't, don't make me get the knee out. I will take the <laughs> knee out, you know. And, uh, so you're fighting Steven Peterson, um, mm -hmm. you know, 29 years old. You guys are close in age and everything. You know, he's been in the UFC a couple of fights. 
Uh, what's your first take on Steven? Uh, first take on Steven is that he's actually Steven Wynn, the kid I found in the container series. That's his teammate. So oh, they're both from so- Fortis. They're both from Fortis MMA in Texas. Mm. So it'll be interesting, um, you know, having Coach Safe Saud uh, coaching against me again, or or maybe trying to come up with an either a new game plan or maybe try to implement the original game plan better with Steven. Ocho. Right. Um, you know, but he's a tough guy. I mean, he's had five fights in the UFC. He's yeah. got he fought some good guys. He fought Violent Bob Ross. He fought Brandon Davis. Uh, uh, Matt Bissett, Bruce Leroy. You know. Yeah. So he's a, and he's a tough. He's a. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to say he's a tough brawler because I. I don't. I think brawler is kind of like an insult to people. Like because I mean you're just saying like they don't know how to strike and they just throw. Right. Right. Like, he's a. He's a tough striker. He's very aggressive, um, especially in the first round. He's come forward. Uh, he's got some decent grappling. I noticed he likes to jump on people's backs if he gets a chance. If you stick sure. your neck anywhere near his armpit, he'll he'll grab your neck and try to jump it. Um, he's not too bad off his back either. Um, and he's got the he's got the experience. He's got five fights in the UFC. Right. So, right. Do you think that's an advantage on his side that he's got a couple of fights underneath those lights? For sure. He's already oh. been there. He's he's passed the UFC jitters, you know, thing. If obviously I don't I don't know if the UFC jitters will really you know affect me in the fight because obviously not everybody's going to feel it but some people will feel it right um you know it's the big show but hopefully i'll be able to manage it well i should i'll be in great shape you know so if i do run into that and i do get a little bit a little tired you know i should be able to recover from that but uh yeah i mean it's definitely an advantage on his side but you know i i think i'm i'm already at that level and i should be able as long as i perform and do the things that i know i want to do and pose you know the game plan that i want to you know impose I, it shouldn't even matter right there you go there you go uh two more questions and then we got uh 10 funny questions at the end we call it going bananas yeah. here again for you brother uh one you said it earlier about espn uh so many of the fighters tell me like i love it you know they're so happy with the deal uh i believe your fight's gonna be on espn plus i talked to felicia about it, and she said the same thing she's like yeah I'm, I'm excited to fight on espn on espn plus Usually those prelims get so many, uh, the views are incredible before yeah. the ESPN Plus show. So how is it to fight on ESPN? What does that kind of do for you and the platform? Yeah, I mean, ESPN's, you know, when they were with Fox, I mean, that was a huge move. Uh, obviously, ESPN, I think a lot more people are watching ESPN. I mean, when you could talk to any, uh, I don't know, normal dad, right? And they right. probably turn on ESPN in the morning and watch sports. They right. watch top 10 plays. They watch, you know, the news stories that are going on. And they might see that there are UFC fights coming on, or they might see the highlights from the weekend. I mean, I played baseball from age six all the way up to high school. And so, you know, growing up as a as a baseball kid, you always wanted to be on ESPN. I mean, we used to watch the – I would wake up at like six in the morning and watch the top ten plays five or six times all the way through because they would keep repeating – you right. know, as like the broadcast goes on. That baseball and, uh, tonight at eleven o'clock was dope, though. That was the show back in the day, a decade ago. Hell yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, to to finally be on there and and be, you know, I could have a video of me doing my flying knee, and then just before that, it's you know LeBron making a three pointing, you know, three point win, you know, like, and I'm I'm in there like with him, like yeah, just being being with the stars, the guys that you looked up to growing up, you know, is huge. Absolutely. Um, Talking, we're wrapping up 2019. We're going into 2020. And to me, there's no division in 2020 that's more um, just with now the new champion, Alexander Volkanovsky. Uh, You know, you got just Max. You got Zabit. You got Korean Zabi, who just did his thing against Frankie. The division, one through 15, the rankings are absolutely stacked. And I love it. It's like new guys. You got some of the old veterans, the icons, the legends. Uh, You got Max Holloway, who was like, it's kind of cool to see him without the title. And he's like, he's adamant about getting that thing back. He's like already put it out there. I want it back. He's not stepping away to me. I'm a Max Holloway fan. How can you not be if you're in the fight game? So what's your take on just the UFC featherweight division? I mean, they're all killers. I mean, aside from, you know, everybody would say that the lightweight division or the welterweight division would be the, you know, most stacked divisions, which they are. Right. I just think 45. I mean, like you said, the top 15, they're all killers. I mean, Josh, Josh Emmett. <laughs> yeah, Josh, dude, Josh Emmett's a killer, you know? Calvin Cater. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, like you said. Uh, Jeremy uh, Stevens. Jeremy Stevens. Like, Gary you know, Rodriguez. Who's Gary, like, that's a scary, <laughs> those are scary fighters, right? Those are scary yeah, guys. Yeah, bro. So, I mean, out of the top 15, you can literally match 
any of those guys with whoever the current champion is, and they would have a very good chance of right. you know beating the champ, right? Um, so I mean, I think we're definitely in the one of the most stacked divisions, you know, in the UFC, especially like you said, there's a lot of new blood coming through. You right. know, some of the older guys are kind of you know making their way out, and the new the new you know blood is making their you know entry into the division. Right. That's what I love about the division right now. Uh, the lightweight, those four or five guys have been there for like two, three years. And that is kind of amazing because those four or five guys are top 10 guys in the world. But yep. the featherweight just seems like they're one through 12. Uh, Arnold Allen, he's another stud. I like that kid a lot. Like the yep. kid, there's just so much potential. These there could be five champions in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, Usually 100%. the top 10, 15, they're, they're not. But uh, my man, Alon Cruz, um, uh, February 29th, Norfolk Scope. I cannot wait. But bro, let's go bananas. Uh, First thing pops in your head that can be a 10 second answer or 10 minutes up to you. Uh, yeah. We'll get going. You ready? Yep. All Let's right. If you started a charity, what would it be for? I, if, I, if I started a charity, I mean, I have I have a lot of charity ideas in my mind. <laughs> but good. If, if I had to go with one, I'd probably go with uh, maybe like like stray dogs. You know, like like helping right. out stray dogs at. Right. Uh, you know, whether it's just stray dogs that are out on the street or the ones that are at the pound that need to be adopted. Because uh, my first dog that I got, Zoe, you know, she passed away. We had to put her down a while ago. But she, we found her in the street, and it was cold outside, and she had this, like, tight, like, raggedy, you know, collar. And she had uh, heartworms when we when we found her. So we did the wow. heartworm treatment and everything. It was like yeah, was like two or $3,000 worth of treatments that we had to do. But, I mean, we loved her so much. And when we found her, we – didn't even know what her age really was. I mean, she was maybe like two and a half, almost three. And she lived for about another five, five, six years. And, uh, you know, her liver was just already bad to begin with and whatnot. But right. you know, I was glad that we found her and we were able to give her, you know, enjoy her time and give her a good. The, she was a spoiled, yeah. you know, spoiled princess in our, in our house. So I was able to, you know, be happy to give her that time. And so, you know, I'm a big dog person. I'm huge on, on dogs and animals Love. In, in general. So that would probably be, like, my first if I if I had a chance. Love it, man. Uh, dude, you already got massive amount of fans with that flying knee. We're going to put this out. We're going to put that on a loop. Uh, you're going to have <laughs> massive fans. People love dogs, dude. They're, they they're, do. They do. They're best friends. How do you, you know? how do you not? They love you unconditionally. It's unreal, man. Um, who's your favorite teacher? In anything? Yeah. Could be second grade. It could be someone in the on the mats. It could be you know your favorite teacher. Man, I had a English teacher in high school. His name was Don Robinson. We ever call him Don Rob. And so at a time, this was I was at Plant High School, and we had an English te uh, English class, but we had like forty kids in our class. So what they decided to do is split the class in half. So half the class stayed with one teacher, Miss Palios, and the other ones went with Miss Don Rob. Yeah. So Don Rob, man. He, I, I just like some of the things I'll never forget, you know, taking his class, like he made it interesting to like read some certain books. Like when we read the great Gatsby, like I loved reading that book, um, you know, a poem that I never forget, um, that we read about war in a world, world war two, you know, I, sometimes I'm friends with him on Facebook and I'll send him, uh, you know, the, the, the title of the actual poem and I'll send it to him and, you know, he'll be like, oh, he'll be like, he'll be like, hell yeah. Like, he remembers it. Um, just wow. just certain things that I picked up in his class and the way he made me want to think about certain things. Right, kind right. of changed my perspective uh, on certain things in life. And then just in literature, I guess, and, and arts as well. Um, Don Rob, I mean, he's huge. I like Don Rob. <laughs> we got we got to get him to Northbrook. We got to get yeah. him to the oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to try to. For sure. Um, who's your first celebrity crush? Her celebrity crush. Is it Full House, Saved by the Bell, Baywatch? Oh, oh. you know what? You know <laughs> what? Anything about kids shows. Um, oh Beyonce? Uh, who, who was it? Uh, <laughs> God, it's a, it's a hard question. You go with loaded questions. Man, we're bringing the heat, bro. We're bringing it's the heat. You know what? You know what? The Pink Ranger. The original oh, Pink Ranger. Yes, the dark hair. Yes, yes. The hair. Wow. Yeah. Man. That was, man, when I watched Power Rangers, I was just like, yeah. Blown away by her. <laughs> yeah, she was bringing the smoke for sure. I mean, she, still, she still looks good today, even even though. Okay, after this, I'm Google imaging her. I'm doing yeah. it right after. 
<laughs> Describe yourself as a uh, as a teenager in three words. Um, hmm. Weird, happy, and frail. <laughs> <laughs> really? I was re- I was really small like you know going into wow. freshman year um I remember actually until sophomore year I was four foot nine barely a hundred maybe like 105 pounds I was really small and then from like sophomore year to senior year I grew to like 5 11 and right. then you know I was wrestling at 145 and 152 and then after that I mean now I'm six foot you know, walk around 180 pounds. So, I mean, you know, I, back in the day, I was real frail. Uh, walk 180? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, you know. Ooh, I, I like it, I like it. Um, I, make, I make weight every time, so. I love that. That's even better. <laughs> What's your favorite piece of technology? Uh, video games, video game consoles. Okay. Uh, you know, my first system was a Super Nintendo when I was five, maybe six. And uh, I remember, I'll never forget, you know, uh, we opened it, we opened it up at Christmas and my cousin was there with me, uh, Christina. And so she used to play video games with me all the time. And we opened it up and we were playing Super Mario Brother, Super Mario World. That was the first game I got. And yeah. I remember we were looking at our controllers like, you know, you look at the screen and you're trying to see what your buttons are doing. And this is how we played half the time. Oh and then it got to the point where like, I mean, I still have my Super Nintendo to this day and I have about... 70, 78 different games. What's and, up, Maverick? Uh, yeah, my, my girlfriend just walked in the door, so she's going ham right now. But uh, I have about 78 different games, and, you know, I still, I'll still play it today. I hook it up every now and then. That's awesome. That Mario Kart? That was it. I, Mario, I had Mario Kart, too, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I, had all, I had all the games. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Um, In their absolute prime, who do you have in a boxing match? Floyd Money Mayweather or Roy Jones Jr.? Well, okay. Well, Roy Jones is way bigger. Um, right. But I mean, if we're talking about, I mean, if we just made it like knockout power for the, you know, respective weight classes, I would go Roy Jones. Roy Jones is so, I mean, Mayweather's fast, but Roy Jones is so fast, especially when he was younger and he had the knockout power to go with it. You know, yeah. Floyd definitely, when he was younger, he would definitely put people away. He had knockout power also, but I just think, I think Roy is definitely way more dangerous. I agree. Um, where are you going to retire? Probably here. Probably somewhere in Florida. I, mean, water. I, I, I love the climate here. I can't. I mean, except aside from the humidity. Right. Um, although I do like Tennessee. Yeah. I, I like Tennessee's weather. I like the people out there. So, you know, if I had to really go somewhere else, it'd probably be Tennessee other than Florida. Okay. Okay. Um, who's the most interesting person you have ever talked to? These are great questions. Thank you, sir. Um, That's why the numbers are up, man. We're killing it on this podcast. <laughs> Life bananas. We go worldwide. <laughs> the most interesting person, man. My uh, man, my jujitsu coach Joey. He's pretty. He's pretty down to earth and pretty cool. Um, he's got some really interesting philosophies on things and things to say. Um, he's a very smart guy. He knows a lot. I say he knows a little about a lot of things, but he also knows a lot about big things as well. Yeah, I love um, that. You know, and he's just a great person altogether. Obviously, my head coach is very interesting to talk to as well, you know, mindset-wise. Um, I mean, I, I really have to put all my coaches in there, to be honest. All my coaches are very interesting people and very interesting personalities, and they're all completely different. And they all have very good things to say. And anything they tell me or – try to convey to me uh i take it and i just try to learn from it wow that's awesome that's good to kind of have that well balance of so many different ideas and methods and all that around you that's good um who's your favorite movie character of all time james bond pierce brosnan pierce the golden yeah. eye game there you go yeah Super yeah <laughs> He's classic. i always for the longest time when i was a kid i you know i, I used to think he was brad pitt so i'd always <laughs> call him brad pitt even though <laughs> 
because that's the only name I knew as a kid, right? Right. So right. I didn't know his name was Pierce Brosnan, but he was my favorite. Uh, double. I mean, I like Daniel Craig too, but you know, growing up, Pierce Brosnan was 007, was James Bond. That's awesome. Man. That's awesome. Um, oh, that was it. We're we're done. We're we're bananas. This is Alon Cruz. Check him out on the IG very easily. Alon Cruz. Uh, my man, the floor is yours. Anything you want to say? Uh, February 29th, UFC debut. So pumped. So uh, we're so happy for you. Um, any sponsors, plugs, gyms? Uh, say hi to the girlfriend. Anything you want? Well, first of all, hello, Karen. It's my girlfriend. Uh, my dogs, Maverick and Zayden. Uh, hello, mom. And uh, man, I got you know I have so many good sponsors around me. Uh, Angry Elephant Tattoos. I've got uh, the Athletic Studio Taz CrossFit. It's my CrossFit gym. I do my strength conditioning there with. Frederick Sadler, uh, Black Lion Athletics. Um, I also have Joey Best at Ybor City Jiu-Jitsu Club. Uh, my wrestling coach, Mamu Goma, he wrestled on the Egyptian national team uh, in Greco. Uh, my head coach, uh, Daniel Hurtado. He, uh, I mean, I can't, I can't really tell you too much about what he does because he doesn't like people knowing. But, you know, he's he's my head my head main coach and my head striking coach as well. Right. Uh, Gabriel Maldonado at Great St. Pete. Uh, Dr. Doug, Pro Health. Um, he, he's my chiropractor and also lets me use all of his massage therapists to, you know, fix me every day. Um, shit. I know I've got to get, oh, Adam Cantor. He's my other wrestling coach. I would consider him, uh, at Grace Tampa South. I go there on Saturdays and wrestle with him. Um, I don't want to forget anybody, but this, this is definitely going to happen. Uh, <laughs> that's, 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 that's all I can really think of right now. It always all does. My, all my Publix peeps. Everybody at Publix that supports me. You know, Publix, they're always behind me. So There you go. Hey, that's Florida home ground right there, Publix. It is. Um, it is. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get you together with Felicia Spencer. You guys can take the same flight. We'll go at a MCO, fly out there to Northbrook, Virginia. Uh, man, continue success. Uh, happy holidays to you and yours. Uh, happy New Year uh, 2020. Thank, you. Thank 2020. you, man. Happy holidays to you as well. Appreciate it, brother. Talk to you. Have a good day, all right? All right, you as well. Have all a good right. one.